The dollar is on an absolute tear this morning as we go into a new trading week. Friday, we had a big pop on the dollar and it seems Monday is more of the same as people are preparing for a couple big market events coming up here uh, in the end of April as well as going into May. Let's dive into all of it here on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Remember, if you enjoy my content, hit that thumbs up button as we start the video. And I want to show you guys some things that I'm looking at in terms of the dollar. So if we draw the uh, the Fibonacci retracements here from the previous high down to the previous low, one thing I want to show you is that all three levels have had some impact uh, on the chart. You can see on Friday, we rallied up to the 38.2% retracement. And we saw a spike above followed by some hold there from the, from the bears. But then price immediately was able to shoot up to the 50% retracement, which I thought that might hold. And it did not. It did briefly. But then we shot higher up to today where we trade above the 61.8% retracement. So what does this mean from a technical perspective for the dollar? Well, if I'm being honest, if price is able to close on the four hour chart outside of the 61.8, it actually looks really strong for the dollar, which of course, if you guys have been watching the channel, you know I'm not very bullish on the dollar right now. Uh, so I have to give credit to the, the dollar bulls. This is a pretty impressive move here to the upside. And the question is, is this going to last? Are we gonna continue to see more upside on the dollar? My personal opinion here is I am still bearish on the dollar, though if this 61.8% retracement breaks, I'm going to pause on trying to short the dollar. Now, I do have a position. Let me be uh, transparent here. I like to show when things are going well and when things are not going well. So here is my current trade on gold. I went long here this morning around 2000 and have since seen the price go against me. So of course, not always fun. Uh, but again, on my channel, I try and show you guys the ups and the downs. Here's my gold position. I'm down $225 on this trade. We'll see if we can recover on this a little bit here today. But if not, I will stop out if price does continue to the downside, uh, which is signified here uh, around 1978 is where I am going to get stopped out if this price does continue to roll over. So why am I bullish on gold despite this? Well, uh, overall, the dollar has been really weak. And from a fundamental standpoint, I am still very much not a fan of trying to buy this dip. And the reason for that is because the Federal Reserve, in terms of uh, the rate hiking cycle that we've been in, seems to be coming to sort of that, that uh, precipice. The end of the rate hiking cycle seems to be coming closer and closer. Now, part of this, we had a, um, I believe there was a Federal Reserve uh, member that had some very hawkish things to say on Friday, which caused the launch of the dollar as they, uh, I forget exactly who said it, it was a notable name, I'm blanking on the name, uh, but they mentioned that more rate hikes were coming. And of course, the market is expecting at this time, one rate hike coming in the month of May. That's why I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the rate hikes, uh, the, the rate uh, is expected to go up by 25 basis points in May. That is sort of market consensus right now. And of course, if there's any surprises, we will be covering it on the channel. I went long gold uh, at 2000. My stop loss is below market structure. If this breaks, I'll be out of the trade uh, and I'll just look to, to pause on trying to catch gold on a pullback. I'll wait for another opportunity in the future. Let's take a look at some other markets in the meantime. The S&P 500 also uh, pulling back a little bit from its highs, but not nearly as sold off here today as the gold market. Uh, and again, when I go back to that dollar, if this dollar cracks here on 61.8, it's probably due for a bit more of a push to the upside, which would have some uh, negative effect on the S&P, the gold market, and of course, some of the other dollar related currency pairs, which for example, we have Euro dollar selling off big time. And you can see coming all the way down to that 61.8% and not finding a lot of resolve here as we speak. The bears look really strong for now, but in my opinion, I'm not overly optimistic for the sellers in this market. Here's why. I wanna show you guys in terms of the, uh, the smart money first, and then we'll take a look at retail sentiment. <clears throat> If we look at this in terms of the US dollar, there is a still a pretty heavy long exposure on the dollar, but there is even greater impact on the Euro. The Euro is one of the most heavily, uh, actually, I guess in terms of uh, proportion wise, it's the most heavily bought currency. So I wouldn't necessarily be betting against the Euro at this time personally, uh, though the dollar does have a bit of strength. Uh, it's something again, to compare to uh, two very strongly bought assets, 
it becomes a little less interesting. Also, part of the reason why I'm long biased on gold is that gold has a very heavy preference to long side. And we can actually take a look at these assets down here. We can get the latest changes too. So if I look at the euro, the euro has had a big increase in long exposure in the last uh, reporting. And the gold market has a little uh, decrease, but also a decrease on the short side. So we have decreases on the short side, decreases on the long side. This, uh, Frank suggested in our live stream here today, he suggested that this could just be people uh, taking positions off prior to the upcoming uh, Mar uh, May meeting, as well as earnings season here in the United States, which could, uh, which could cause some volatility. The euro also has, like I said, a big increase in long exposure from institutional money and a slight decline in short interest. Uh, the dollar itself, uh, not too much to speak on here. We do have a slight increase in longs, but actually a bigger increase in shorts, which is a very notable thing going into this week for those of you watching the US dollar or US dollar crosses. Uh, in terms of retail sentiment, how are the retail traders positioned? And I'm gonna add uh, commodities on here as well so we can get an idea of what gold is up to. So when I look at this chart, what this is gonna show us is it's gonna show us retail positioning on uh, various uh, different currency pairs and assets. So when we look at the USDCHF, retail traders, and remember what retail traders are buying, we are usually gonna be more oriented to the sell side. The reason for that is that retail traders tend to be on the wrong side of, the tr of great trends that occur in the market very often. Dollar Swiss, Dollar CAD, retail traders are buying these pairs. Uh, NZD, USD, retail traders are buying uh, NZD. Uh, AUD, same story. Oil, 50-50. Gold, about 54% on the short bias and 46% on the long bias. So a slight preference to short the gold market, which is part of the reason why I'm bullish gold myself. Uh, the euro market, the retail traders are still uh, net short on the euro and the pound as well as dollar yen. This is a very interesting one to pay attention to going into this week as you do have a lot of exposure uh, to, the sh to, the, to the long side of the dollar, which is a red flag if you're watching it. If you guys want access to our market scanning software called the Edge Finder, it is a software tool that we've been working on for the last one year. And currently we are celebrating our one year celebration sale. If you want access to the Edge Finder for a massive discount, head over to our uh, website where you can chat with a support representative. If you click this link, <clears throat> click tell me about your discounts, you'll be directed to where you can get access to the Edge Finder for our biggest sale price of the entire year. We are celebrating one full year of development of this tool. My company, A1 Trading, we build tools like this for traders. Uh, it includes things like the Retail Sentiment tab, the Smart Money Tracker, uh, bank signals, seasonal trends, and of course, all the economic data, GDP, inflation, unemployment, simplified for traders to get more insights on their trading. So again, click this link down below in the description, click tell me about your discounts, and it will tell you about how you can chat uh, with a support rep and get access to our tools for our biggest discount of the year. So there you go. Now back to the video again, in terms of positioning, I also do want to buy the S&P 500 if I can, uh, but it would have to be on a pullback. So where we're currently sitting, I don't really have a lot of interest. I would like to see this thing uh, give us a dip uh, and in which case I, I'm interested in potentially getting long uh, around maybe 40, 80. But again, one of the other notable things that I wanna talk to you guys about going into this week and, and going into next week is earnings season. For those of you who watch indices, uh, earnings season is upon us. This is where, where big companies, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, all that sort of thing, they will be reporting their earnings for, uh, for the previous quarter, right? How did they do? How did they project to go into the future? And this will have a huge impact on the indices as it, earnings, of course, when tracking a stock, if earnings are better than expected, uh, it will be bullish. And if things are worse than expected, uh, of course, it is bearish. So for me watching the indices, I am looking at the S&P 500 on a pullback around that 40, 80 mark. Here's that NASDAQ. Again, I think value uh, for me would be around 12,800. That's where I'd be interested in potentially getting long on a pullback there. And for those of you watching US 30, US 30 has run away from us here uh, and probably not really anywhere near a buy zone for me unless we get a deeper retracement down to like 33,300, something like that. So we'll watch that one, of course, as well. But of course, my favorite to trade of the three is the, uh, the S&P 500 with the NASDAQ second. So usually US 30 is not uh, one that I'm trading myself. This is, of course, the Dow Jones industrial average. Um, on top of this, let's talk about dollar yen, which has been rising pretty strongly recently. 
what does this recent strength do to? Well, it's actually that the yields uh, uh, of, of bonds are up, which of course has strong correlation to the dollar yen. So you can see yields are up today. You have the five year up 2.55%. Uh, and this is of course an interesting thing to pay attention to. The bond market is uh, a very important market that does not get a lot of attention. And it is a very, very important one, especially for currency traders. So I definitely would encourage you guys to take some time to do some research on the bond market if you're not familiar. Again, it can be very telling, especially with currency pairs like the dollar, uh, the dollar yen, and etc. So again, huge impact on the dollar there as bonds are rising here uh, going into this week. Let's take a quick look here uh, in terms of indices and commodities, how things are doing. You've got Bitcoin down here. Uh, oil is up today. Frank, I think, is, is bullish on oil uh, right now after breaking through. Notable for those of you who watch oil. This was a huge, uh, huge move for oil. We, we saw a gap up uh, and actually were able to stay up there and now even breaking out. Usually you see gaps get filled, but not always. And in this case, what we see is we may be uh, on, uh, on a bigger move to the upside as oil demand uh, rises. There was recently uh, a big announcement in terms of OPEC that supply was being cut, I believe from Saudi Arabia, which uh, not a market that I pay attention to a lot. Oil is not something I, I regularly, really, uh, really often trade, but still nonetheless an interesting uh, catalyst for a potential up move on the oil market for those of you who watch it. Hey, guess what? I just found a video made just for you. Click this video to help with your trading and uh, thanks for watching.